So when patients have mitral valve regurgitation, they become short of breath. Early on, in the typical pattern, although not always, they become short of breath gradually over time, so that they begin to notice that they can do less and less before they develop the shortness of breath, and the shortness of breath becomes more and more severe with less exertion. The mitral valve is a very complex apparatus, and it's actually truly an apparatus of, of about five different structures. The annulus, the mitral valve leaflet tissues, the cordy tendinii, the papillary muscles, and the left ventricle. All of those things are taken into consideration when the mitral valve is leaking and not working right, because then we as physicians, both the cardiologist and the surgeon, have to figure out why that mitral valve in that particular patient is not working. And there are a whole host of different types of disease processes that result in the mitral valve not working well. It makes a difference in how we treat the patient and what we do at the time of operation. It's important to remember that when we discuss mitral valve regurgitation, there are degrees of mitral regurgitation. And basically, any patient will find four ways to refer to mitral regurgitation. It's either mild, moderate, moderately severe or severe. The reason that's important is that most of the time we do not really evaluate a patient for surgical treatment unless they have severe mitral regurgitation. Now there are certain circumstances and exceptions to that rule, but by and large surgeons usually don't see patients until they have severe mitral regurgitation.